In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. From the very beginning, the word was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The word was the source of life. And this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on everyone. The word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave him the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. Out of the fullness of his grace he has blessed us all, given us one blessing after another. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, who is the same as God is at the Father's side, has made him known. This is the prologue of John's Gospel. It's deliberately written to echo the story that we read at the very beginning of the Old Testament, starting in particular with the same words, in the beginning. And now with less than a week to go to Christmas, we begin to focus on exactly what it means. Exactly what this concept of the incarnation that we've been talking about for the last four weeks means what it means that God came to live as a human being in older translations of the Bible the word became flesh and dwelt among us what does it mean for us the final of the four themes we have looked at hope at joy and at peace and the last is love we read elsewhere in the Bible that God is love. We read that God loved the world so much that he gave us his only son. And here we read a knot of love, of light. A light that cannot be put out. A light that shines on everyone. Because God loves us and his love and his light is for everyone, whether they recognize it or not. We see love all the time in our jobs. The love that people have for their pets. The love that they have for the animals that they work with. The love that they have for their livestock. We see love every day. We see how that impacts both positively and negatively on relationships and on animal welfare. And at this time of year, how do we see how much we are loved and appreciated? If your prize is anything like mine, you will be drowning by now in boxes of chocolates and biscuits and thank you cards. But actually, this is the time that we can really feel appreciated, which is maybe harder through the rest of the year. And we pray that love may permeate everywhere. Because everything that we've talked about is wrapped up in love. What do we hope for? We hope for love. Where do we find joy? We find joy in love. What brings peace? Love. Jesus tells us to love our enemies as we love ourselves. If we love ourselves, we will have joy. We love our enemies, there will be peace. 
concept of light and the darkness is one I return to every single Advent. There are numerous arguments about whether Christmas is more of a Christian or a pagan tradition. Certainly Christianity stole the date from paganism. And the pagan religion was all about the darkness of winter and the light coming into the darkness and the days beginning to lighten and get longer. And it was about the hope of spring. And Christianity took that imagery and stole it to be part of their Christmas and Advent tradition, which already existed. A light that shines and we are called to follow that light. We're called to be that light. We're called to show that light. God is a bit like a lighthouse, shining in the darkness. Use and light should be our guide in our life. That we may be drawn towards that light, use that light to avoid the obstacles and the dangers of life. And to follow that light into Christmas into the new year of 2024 and throughout our lives. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never, can never, will never put it out. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you love us. That you love us in a way that we cannot understand. For we spend our lives ignoring you and rejecting you. Doing things you know you would not approve of. And regardless of this, you forgive us. Continue to love us with a love that is so encompassing and so penetrating, so deep, that we cannot compare it to another love. Even those that we know and think are the greatest in our lives. Let us recognize that deep, aching love. And let us try in our own ways to reciprocate it. To love you as you love us. To love ourselves as you love us. To love each person that we come across in our daily lives as you love us and them. Fill this world with love, Lord. For that is why you came as a babe in Bethlehem, a tiny child, inconsequential, with no power, with no ability, completely dependent on humanity, with no influence, with no status, born in a stable, in a backwater village, to Parents who were living with a reputation. Bring us love this Christmas. Bring us love in the new year. Bring us love throughout our lives. Because we love because you first loved us. Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe.
safe to show Sure.